Hi there, welcome back to a fresh new Double Cube tutorial. I'm going to be calling these tutorials Double Cube tutorials from now on. So, uh, today in this tutorial, we'll be, we'll, we're going to be learning to create this amazing wooden looking sphere completely in Cinema 4D. Uh, it is pretty simple. So, the original concept uh, was by uh, this guy uh, here by Colin Laker and it was probably a time-lapse video or a speed art and uh, I actually put in uh, a uh, you know uh, comment saying I'll make a tutorial but I'll give you a complete credit and he'll like be my guest so uh, that's what uh, I'm gonna be making so if you just go through the time-lapse you see it's uh, pretty quick he does the uh, lighting and the materialing and everything's what and all so um, let's get started with it. So here I'm gonna go and change my render settings 1280 by 720 as default and then the first thing is what we want is a sphere. So let's grab a sphere. I'm gonna go display grow shading lines. Okay and uh, I'm gonna go to the front view by pressing F4. Okay. And I'm gonna go to the segments and set that to 61 segments. And I'm going to go to the sphere and click on the button to make it edible. Now we're going to be selecting few polygons and deleting them. So I'm going to go to the polygon selection tool. I'm going to press UL on the keyboard to get my loop selection. So if I press U, we see we have a bunch of uh, uh, options. So if we go L, if we see L, it's loop selection. So that selects the loop. So I'm going to be selecting a few loops. So I'm going to be selecting. Uh, this one over here, this loop, and also, uh, so this is third one from the middle, and I'm gonna leave four spaces, so that's one, two, three, four, and I'm gonna select the fifth one by holding shift, and here and at the bottom, let's see, oh, uh, see, so we have two spaces over here, let me make a three here, so one, two, three, let's leave that, select this one, let's leave one, and select this one, and then we want to leave four spaces one two three four and select this one and then we're going to hit delete then we can go back to our perspective view and uh, this is what we get okay so once we have that you want to go and create uh, a separate part for each of uh, these spheres okay so how are we going to do that actually uh, in the video he has uh, he was using Cinema 4D R16 and above, I guess. So there was a def deformer called as the bevel deformer. So that bevel deformer uh, was applied to each of the separate region of these spheres to give it a bevel. But um, since I'm using R15 and I do not have the bevel deformer, I will have to be using the default uh, bevel tool, uh, bevel option over here. So I'm not going to be splitting them into single parts i'm just going to bevel them directly so before we do that what we want to do is we want to go zoom in over here uh, i'm going to select the points tool i'm going to press ctrl a and i'm just going to optimize it so that we get rid of the unnecessary points and i'm going to go choose right click and choose close polygon hole and we want to close the polygon holes right there so we want to close all the polygon holes so like this polygon hole, uh, make polygon hole, polygon hole, polygon hole. Let's uh, get over here, close this up and close this up. Okay. So now, if I get away from the points tool, we see that there's a problem. You know, some edges problem over here. So since we do not have any lines on the flat face we're having these edging problems so to fix that i'm just going to select the font tag and i'm going to set it to 30 degrees which is going to remove that problem next what we want to do is we want to go select the, the uh, polygon tool and we want to go select the surfaces that we just created so i'm just going to set the radius of this to five so we have an easier selection so basically i'm just selecting the uh close the flat faces so uh, this one I'm holding shift by the way to select all of that uh, this one we need this one 
and uh, we need this one we need this one and uh, this one and uh, let's zoom right here and this one okay so once we have selected all those faces i'm going to right click and i'm going to go to subdivide and i'm going to choose this uh, this gear icon it gives us some options and i'm going to just set the subdivision to one and hit okay so what that does is it subdivides the whole uh, thing to give it because when we use the deformers it's going to uh, want to have more polygons to give it a smooth deform okay okay so once we are have selected uh, all this we get something that uh, looks like this pretty much kind of and now what we want to do is we want to go select the edge tool and go right click oh go to select and loop selection or press ul and we want to select all the edges so that uh, we get a clear uh, i mean uh, let's select the edges and i'll tell you what to do next so let's go select the all the edges perfectly matching it should look uh, perfect so we do not want any if you if you, you know don't select it properly it might cause some really bad problems which uh, ugly which should make the model look pretty ugly so uh, i'm holding shift by the way to select everything select it select it okay so you just have to move your cursor a little bit here and there so that till we you can see the white uh bar encompassing the whole thing okay so once we do that, I'm going to go right click and choose bevel and I'm going to set the offset to 1 and a subdivision to 2 and hit enter. So now what that does is that just bevels out the edges. So in the original video, by in the time lapse, which my, which uh, this guy, uh, Colin Liker used, he uses the bevel deformer to deform the part. part. So he splits it up into uh, different parts. See, as you can see, he's doing it over here. And then he adds the bevel deformer to weld it, the edges, but I'm not going to be doing that. I just you know, did it plainly, plainly like this. Okay. Uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to go and add the twist deformer. So where's the twist deformer? Twist. Yeah, there is twist deformer. And we want to drop it in under the sphere. And if it increases, we can see it twisting. So we want to set this to say something around 130. And let's zoom out. And what makes this thing look so crazy is when we rotate it. So if we go to the rotation tool by pressing R and we rotate it, we can see some crazy rotations. You get my point? Crazy stuff. So I just uh, have some default values which I'll just put up. So say around minus 120 for the heading, minus 140 for the P, and let's say 450 for Z. And uh, then let's go, let's drive in a camera. And uh, we're going to zero out the coordinates. I'm just putting the right click button on the values over here. And uh, we can uh, bring this up pretty much. So, and you can also take the sphere and rotate that as well if you're not looking for something cool. Okay. And uh, that's pretty much for the sphere. And uh, as you can see in the original picture, we have these uh, little uh, small balls that he put up. So uh, let me just put that on the scene as well. So we're gonna go and uh, we're gonna grab a sphere. And uh, in the sphere, we're gonna go and change the objects radius to say something like 15. And then we're gonna go choose a MoGraph effector cloner, put the sphere inside the cloner, go to the cloner. Okay, now the thing is we want it to clone on an object so the object is going to be a bigger sphere and uh, i'm going to set the radius to say something around 165 that's pretty big now when i drop the sphere inside the cloner and uh, hide it we can see we have a bunch of uh you know spheres now if i want to reduce the number of spheres it's pretty simple i just have to go to the sphere and reduce down these segments uh, not the segments of that, or the segments of the object sphere. So if I reduce that, you can see that the number of clones start reducing. So I'm just going to set this to 18. Now, to give it the random movement, as I said it, we're going to go cloner, more effector, and choose a random effector. And in the positions, I'm going to set the Y to probably 190. 
190 and z2 minus 40 so you know pretty much something like that you know uh, I can even reduce the size of the sphere of your of the cloner let's say something around like uh, 13 and uh, you know you can just play around with it and give whatever your values okay so next uh, we're going to be doing some basic lighting so I'm going to be using Grayscale Gorilla's Lightkick Pro so let's see we're going to go here to the light click and uh, we want to choose an overhead softbox. Just drop that on. Okay, and uh, we want to set the Y position to 400, and uh, the uh, overall scale to 65. That's what he does in the video. Next, we want to go and uh, choose a softbox, and we want to set the X to minus 60 and uh, uh, minus 50 for the Y. So if I get away from the camera and uh, zoom out from the scene, zoom out, uh, zoom out, so we can see the overhead softbox over there. Okay, and uh, the softbox over here. And uh, last thing we want to do is we want to go and choose a bounce card. And uh, the bounce card controls over here. I'm going to set the x to minus 75 and the y to minus 40. I just have the default values which he used in the video. Uh, okay, so it looks uh, something like that. And the last thing we want to do is we want to go and uh, choose a global light. And I'm going to set the brightness to say around 50%. Okay, or actually we can reduce set, set that to 100% depending on your liking. And let's get back into the camera. So I'm going to go here and choose effect ambient occlusion, effect global illumination, set this to low, set this to low as well for the purpose, anti aliasing, set that to a best. And uh, if we press Ctrl R, we can uh, let's just see how it looks without the materials. So uh, it is looking pretty, pretty amazingly cool. Right. Well, that just looks amazing, doesn't it? So uh, let's add up the materials and finish up this cool sphere. So uh, I'm going to be texturing these balls first. So I'm just going to go grab a new material. Let's look into the material. Okay, simple material. So in the color, I'm just going to reduce the. Uh, actually, let's just go to transparency, and I'm going to set this to 1.5. Okay, and uh, in the color, I'm just going to reduce that uh, to say 50. Uh, then I'm going to specular and uh, bring down the fall off. Uh, set the uh, height to say something around 55. Uh, set the fall off to say something around 5. And just go to add a reflection channel and set the brightness to say something around uh, probably a 20. You know to your liking and we can take this and drag it on the cloner 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 where's the cloner yeah cloner and the one thing i wanted to do is we want to go at a uh, hdri but uh, actually let's not do that i mean that's up to your liking but uh, he didn't use it in the original video i think he did not anyways that's not the matter so now is the tricky part so what we want to do is we want to go and uh, um go uncheck the cloner you want to hide all these stuff or and this and remove the twist actually and we can go to the sphere and i'm just going to zero out the coordinates for now and i'm going to go to the front view and i'm going to go select loop selection select the polygon mode and we want to select the whole bunch of loops over here whole bunch of polygons but I'm just going to uncheck only select visible elements and select the whole set I'm going to go selection set selection then I'm going to repeat the process for these okay then go to select set selection then we want to set these go to select set selection select uh, these so for each part oh crap so we want to select the first part go to select set selection and we want to click away select the sphere again and then make another selection go to selection set selection we get another selection tag then click away click that again 
select this, go to select, then go to set selection, click away, select the sphere, select this part, go to select, uh, set selection, click away. So we want to repeat this process, which will pretty take a take a few a minute or so, but uh, we we really need it. So select all this, select and uh, set selection. Perfect. So now let's get back to our perspective view. Put back the cloner, and uh, and you know we can put all this back on. Doesn't matter actually, really. Okay. So now we want to texture this all stuff. So let's uh, grab a new material. Uh, I'm going to set the color to a complete white. Reflection. I'm going to set the brightness to 10. Add a Fresnel texture and set the mix strength to 30. And I'm going to take this material, and um, we are going to drop it later. So let me just duplicate this material, and you want to go to color, and I'm going to set this to a complete black one. And then I'm going to go duplicate it again, and then we're going to go here. And in the color channel, I'm going to go, go to surfaces, and choose wood. Okay? So we get a wood texture over here. So uh, let's look in, and uh, we have a lot of options, like... Jaraganda, pine wood, mahogany, anything. So the original, let's uh, set this to walnut. So the original video, he used, uh, where is that? Um, yeah, he used a cedar. So, so that's why it's called a cedar sphere. Uh, if you go through the video, you can find uh, the link for the te exact texture he used. But uh, uh, I just didn't want to use the same thing. And uh, let's get back over here. And uh, there we go. And now what we want to do is we want to go and apply these materials. So let's go and uh, see where to apply. So let me just uncheck the twist. So for the top one over here, uh, I'm going to be applying the white material on the top. So let me take that. And I'm going to drop in the selection tag. So it selects only this part. Then I'm going to go add the black material. And I'm going to select the second selection tag. And I'm going to drag this one. And this is going to be the third selection. But here, I'm going to set the projection to spherical. Okay? And then we want to go and uh, for the next one, we're going to choose a white one again. So drag the fold selection tag. Drag the fold selection tag. And for the next one, we're going to be adding the wood again. So we're going to go here, select the fifth selection tag. And uh, here, we, again, we're going to go and set the projection to uh, spherical and the last one is going to be a white and uh, drop this in that one and then we put on the twist deformer we get something that looks like this and let's make a quick render with the clones on and see what we have so here is the amazing render after the uh, global illumination settings and ambient occlusion so it looks pretty amazingly cool. Uh, well, actually, for the materials, he used uh, the Grayscale Ross Texture Kit Pro, but I assume that most of you might not have it. So I just made these basic materials, and obviously you can edit them however you want. One last thing that we wanted to do is was add a background, which I kind of forgot. So let's just go and create a background. Let's grab a new material. Let's look into the material. Remove the specular. Go to color. Go to texture. Go to gradient. We want to go and we want to choose circular. Oops, uh, and then we're gonna go and choose a nice uh, color like this, and uh, we're gonna go here and uh, go and choose a kind of a darker color. And actually, we're gonna go to the color. We're gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna select this, and I'm gonna go choose a uh, copy, and I'm gonna uncheck that. Go to luminance. And I'm gonna place that in the luminance channel paste, and then we're gonna take this and drag it on the background. And if I hide everything and hit render we just have a nice background so that is pretty much it for the tutorial guys thank you very much for watching and let me just show you the last render by the guy so here so this is how it, it looks and um, uh, you can follow the video again i'll put a link in the description and you can use this material that he used if you have wayscale gorillas texture kit pro version 3 and uh, that's pretty much it so thank you very much once again and hope you see another future tutorials goodbye have a great day